I mean, you hear about the pollution and the fires and the burning, but I'm, I'm shocked. It's really smoky again on this river. See, that's the reflection of the sun right down there. Something coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, what is that? Oh I'm Ben, that's Ashley. Together we did the unimaginable. We sold everything and then set off on a mission to sail around the world. Civilization. See you later. Twenty countries later and over 25,000 nautical miles, we are only halfway around the world. I have no idea what's going to happen. Subscribe to follow the adventure as we finish this lap. We had set sail towards this island called Borneo a few days prior and we're just a few miles off the coast trying to navigate up a river. This is the river up here that we're going to go up uh, to head to Khmer, which then will take us into Tanjin Putin National Park. Indonesia is a massive developing country located between the Indian and Pacific Oceans. It borders Papua New Guinea in the east, Malaysia to the west, and smack dab in the middle lies the world's third largest island. Our mission was to head deep into the Borneo rainforest to find some of the last wild orangutans. I mean, you hear about the pollution and the fires and the burning and everything, but I'm, I'm shocked. Like, if land is six miles that way and we can't see it. The air is filled with smoke, like you can smell it in the air. And there's this haze. It's a crazy haze. I don't know how to explain it. I just, it's, it's kind of surreal. It's kind of freaky how shallow it is, actually. Little did we know what we were about to experience would be the biggest memory we would take with us from Indonesia. woke up um, and the smog is so bad the it's the forest fires that are burning just upwind of us the sun's actually just coming up over here you can barely see it on the southern tip of Borneo exists a park called Tanjung Putin National Park 400,000 hectares of forest peat swamp mangrove and dense jungle containing some of the last orangutans on the planet it is also an area often covered by a blanket of smoke Smoke from man-made forest fires that are so large that they blanket neighboring countries. In the news, Malaysia is really complaining about the smoke. And they're actually going to try and what's called render the air, which means they fly up above with some sort of chemical spray out in the atmosphere, which then causes it to rain. And I get some of the smoke out of there, apparently. It's Our mode of transport for venturing deep into the Borneo rainforest would be a clock talk houseboat. That's our clock talk. I am so stoked. It looks like the African queen thing, except way bigger. We are going on a three day, two night jungle cruise on a clock talk up a river. I can't wait. This has been such a dream of mine. I totally, I totally am stoked to be here and to go do this. Can you believe it? This thing is so cool. I'm so stoked we get to live on this for two days. Three days, three days, two nights. <laughs> and we have a cook and we don't have to clean. I just can't get over it, it's amazing. Is this Arif, my husband, gonna be your guide? I'm Arif, I will be your guide. Good morning, hey. ben. ben. Good morning, Arif. Good morning, Ashley. Yeah, it's locked up, that's good, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. We have literally been on the boat five minutes and we have breakfast, we have tea, we have juice, we have mango, we have everything. We're spoiled. We're completely spoiled. <laughs> this place is amazing. And there's no boat work. And just like that, we're out of service. It's like five minutes up the river. <laughs> Goodbye cell phone.
It's just been an absolutely gorgeous morning here. Totally mystical with all this smoke and fog. Oh my god! It's going up to the top. Oh wow, that's amazing. Get the other. This is an orangutan in the wild on the side of the river. Oh my god. Eating the fruit? We just found the orangutans. We found them. We're told that if we see wild orangutans on the side of the river, it's like the best thing that can ever happen. It's pretty cool, man. They're just sitting up there. They're pretty big things, man. They're huge. And they're in like these spindly trees. It's kind of crazy. What do you think, Ash? Huge ape just kind of chilling right there on a nook of a tree. Eating berries or something, eating some fruits. <laughs> this is crazy morning. We saw a lot of orangutan in the river bands foraging food. That's a highlight of the highlight. That's crazy. <laughs> wow. Are these wild? That's wild. 100% wild because they are living outside the national park and they can't swim across to the river. So 100% wild orangutans. Uh, this is park, this yes. side of the river. Right, yeah. And that side of the community land. There's a mama and a little baby up there. It's pretty cute. And little baby, like it's probably only, it's probably only this big. Like a little baby was hanging by his arm. Yeah. <laughs> they're pretty cute. I always think they're gonna fall. They're like this. <laughs> like don't let go. Wow, that is so cool. As we cruised up the river, we took to the skies to see the situation from above. The neatly planted rows on the left are from a palm oil plantation. Palm oil is a high yield super crop that is used in almost everything from pizza to donuts, chocolate to deodorant and lipstick. To understand this further, we pulled over and went for a walk. I saw wrangle tents. I think I see uh, something coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, what is that? Oh my god. Oh my It's a wild male orangutan. And he's got big cheek pads. This is the wild one. Uncomfortable with us. But you can tell the males once they get older because they have these huge cheek pads. I don't think it's a king, but it's beautiful. Look at him looking at us. The wild one. And the wild ones, they don't like humans as much. So he's hiding, he's hiding behind the tree. Is it mostly because of the palm oil that they slash burn so that it can grow or? Yeah, mostly the palm oil and also the agricultural things. Yeah, so when they start the agriculture, so it's really important to take this one. This is the pit swam and this is the, the, the top layer before we reach the soil. The soil and this yeah. could be like a meter, right? Yeah, sometimes some places like deeper. even 10 meter, yeah. And this is organic material. And yeah, so all of this is, is organic. Yeah. And <laughs> Whoa. what we're talking about here is something called peat swamp forest. Not many crops will grow on top of this thick layer of dead leaves, so the most effective way to get rid of it is to set it on fire. And and like even if you log it, it would still not be plantable. Yeah, no. We get some fertilizer out of that, some carbons, and then put the soil and then start the agriculture. And that's why. A lot of Borneo is on fire in the summertime is because they're actually burning this so that they can grow palm oil and other crops. Wow. That's a bat. The Dutch, the, the people from Holland introduced this tree how many years ago? Oh, it's about 200 years ago. Yeah, know. like <laughs> 300 years ago, they introduced the rubber tree. And it turns out the rubber tree is 
actually not one of the terrible things that's been introduced here into Borneo. And it's quite an interesting tree. It's, it's kind of cool. I had no idea this is how they make rubber from this tree. And Arif's gonna show us. Check this out. So it's on this little rubber. Oh. So that's rubber. Yeah, that's rubber. So they, do see? they have to process this? Oh wow. Yes, absolutely. It's just, it's so like... after this, they, they bring to the companies, wow, to the really? factory, and then factory Ooh. will follow Smell not really nice, eh? S smells like rubber. <laughs> <laughs> it smells disgusting. like burnt rubber. <laughs> oh, that smells like shit. Look at that, it's already running, isn't it? Except, come yeah, here. So you make it like a circle so it runs. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> oh, look at that. And that's it. Yeah. Every day you can do that in the Every day, in the early morning, every day. <laughs> and it smells, it smells like rubber. <laughs> kind of like burnt rubber, actually. Weird, right? Does it smell like burnt rubber to you, or am I just crazy? I don't know. Yeah, it's rubber. <laughs> and when it dries, it it looks like rubber. Yeah. This this one we can we can mix with the forestry. So we call it agroforestry. Mix with another tree, and usually we also have some different level of the trees. So for example, like we also can planting some chili or herb and spicy so we harvest this one but we also have the that rubber. one the rubber every day yeah we call it agroforestry it's the more sustainable system to mix between agronomy and forestry oh. so we're planting some trees and the reason for this is that other people have cut them down they cut them down they slash burn and then plant these other crops like palm oil, pepper, sugar cane, a lot of things that can be exported. And then the orangutans no longer have a home. So try and make a difference. I'm not a very good gardener. No, I just let you know that. You gotta get your hands dirty actually. Like, come on. Oh, I got the dirt under the fingernails, lady. Behind? There you go. This ain't like some sort of walk in the city. This is a walk in the park. <laughs> Get with the program, Ashley. Mission accomplished. We've been traveling with Arif. Desi and Arif run a really awesome booking company as well as owning a couple boats, but they can arrange tours and help you get here from the airport, from wherever you are and get in and have this wonderful experience with us. They're even working with people with special needs. You gotta talk to them. So how do you get in touch with you? <laughs> you can visit our website in rangtenapplause.com <laughs> or can sending some emails. Uh, you can check it, it's our website.